anti-cancer agents from natural products. In recent years, the development of anti-cancer agents from natural products has been a hot topic in the scientific community. Natural products refer to substances that are derived from plants, anima, s, and microorganisms. These compounds have been used by traditional medicine practitioners for centuries to treat various diseases, including cancer. With the advances in technology, scientists have s and microorganisms. These compounds have been used by traditional medicine practitioners for centuries to treat various diseases, including cancer. With the advances in technology, scientists have been able to isolate, identify and test the efficacy of these compounds against cancer cells. There are several reasons why natural products are attractive as potential anti-cancer agents. Firstly, these compounds are often highly effective in their natural form, which means that they may wreck. Are less optimization to be an effective drug. Secondly, natural products are often well tolerated by the body, which means they have fewer side effects compared to synthetic drugs. Thirdly, natural. Are less optimization to be an effective drug. Secondly, natural products are often well tolerated by the body, which means they have fewer side effects compared to synthetic drugs. Thirdly, natural. Products are often cheaper and easier to produce, which makes them more accessible to patients who need them. Developing natural products into effective anti-cancer agents is not without challenges. One major hurdle is identifying the active compounds within a natural product. Many natural products contain H. Hundreds or even thousands of different molecules, making it difficult to determine which one is responsible for the therapeutic effect. Moreover, natural products can vary in quality depending on the Hundreds or even thousands of different molecules, making it difficult to determine which one is responsible for the therapeutic effect. Moreover, natural products can vary in quality depending on the ORSE, which means there can be inconsistencies in the potency of different batches. For example, a plant grown in one soil may produce different compounds compared to the same plant grown in a diff. Several natural products have been identified as having anti-cancer properties. One of the most well-known examples is Taxol, which is derived from the bark of the Pacific yew tree. Taxol was first I. Elated in the 1960s and was found to have potent anti-cancer properties against a variety of tumor types including breast, ovarian, and lung cancer. Taxol works by stabilizing microtubules, which are Elated in the 1960s and was found to have potent anti-cancer properties against a variety of tumor types including breast, ovarian, and lung cancer. Taxol works by stabilizing microtubules, which are Structures that help cells divide. By stabilizing these structures, Taxol prevents cells from dividing, leading to cell death. Taxol is now used as a chemotherapy drug for cancer treatment and has been Another natural product with anti-cancer properties is curcumin, which is a compound found in turmeric. Curcumin has been shown to have anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and anti-cancer properties. Stew IEs have found that curcumin inhibits the growth of several different cancer cell types, including breast, lung, prostate, and colon cancer. Curcumin works by regulating several different signaling p. IEs have found that curcumin inhibits the growth of several different cancer cell types, including breast, lung, prostate, and colon cancer. Curcumin works by regulating several different signaling p. Thways within cells, which lead to cell cycle arrest and apoptosis, program cell death. Berberine is a natural product that has been used for centuries as a traditional medicine in China and India. Berberine is a compound found in several different plants, including golden seal and barb. Rye. 
berberine has been shown to have anti-cancer properties and has been studied as a potential treatment for several cancers, including breast, prostate, and liver cancer. Berberine works by Avarie. Rye. Berberine has been shown to have anti-cancer properties and has been studied as a potential treatment for several cancers, including breast, prostate, and liver cancer. Berberine works by Avarie. Why of mechanisms, including inhibiting the growth and migration of cancer cells and reducing inflammation. Resveratrol is a natural product found in red wine and grapes, which has been shown to have anti-cancer properties. Resveratrol works by inducing apoptosis in cancer cells and inhibiting the growth O. New blood vessels that are necessary for tumors to grow. Studies have found that resveratrol has anti-cancer effects in several different types of cancer, including breast, colon, and prostate cancer. New blood vessels that are necessary for tumors to grow. Studies have found that resveratrol has anti-cancer effects in several different types of cancer, including breast, colon, and prostate cancer. Dot. In addition to these natural products, there are many others that have potential anti-cancer properties. For example, paclitaxel is a natural product derived from the bark of the Pacific yew tree. The is used to treat ovarian and breast cancer. Camptothecin is a natural product derived from the bark of the Chinese tree Camptotheca acuminata that is used to treat lung and ovarian cancer. Artemisin is used to treat ovarian and breast cancer. Camptothecin is a natural product derived from the bark of the Chinese tree Camptotheca acuminata that is used to treat lung and ovarian cancer. Artemisin N is a natural product derived from the sweet wormwood plant that is used to treat malaria but also shows anti-cancer properties in laboratory studies. Moreover, the use of natural products as anti-cancer agents also has the potential to revolutionize the pharmaceutical industry by providing new insights into drug discovery and development. By study, in these compounds, Scientists can identify new targets for cancer therapy and develop new strategies for drug design. In addition, the use of natural products can also provide a sustainable and envy. In these compounds, scientists can identify new targets for cancer therapy and develop new strategies for drug design. In addition, the use of natural products can also provide a sustainable and envy. On mentally friendly approach to drug development, as the compounds can be sourced from renewable resources. However, it is important to note that natural products are not a panacea for cancer treatment. While these compounds have shown promising results in laboratory studies, they may not be effective in a L patients or cancer types. L patients or cancer types. In addition to the development of natural products as anti-cancer agents, researchers are also exploring the use of these compounds for cancer prevention. Epidemiological studies have shown that POPU Asians that consume diets rich in natural products, such as fruits and vegetables, have a lower incidence of several types of cancer. This has led scientists to investigate the potential of natural P. Asians that consume diets rich in natural products, such as fruits and vegetables, have a lower incidence of several types of cancer. This has led scientists to investigate the potential of natural P. Odux as chemopreventive agents, which can prevent or delay the development of cancer. Several natural products have been identified as potential chemopreventive agents. Other natural products, such as green tea and resveratrol, have also been studied for their chemopreventive property. S. S. The use of natural products as chemopreventive agents has several advantages over traditional cancer treatments. Firstly, chemoprevention can be used in people who are at high risk of developing cancer. R. 
such as those with a family history of the disease, to prevent cancer from developing in the first place. Secondly, chemopreventive agents are often well tolerated by the body, which means they ha. are, such as those with a family history of the disease, to prevent cancer from developing in the first place. Secondly, chemopreventive agents are often well tolerated by the body, which means they ha. e fewer side effects compared to traditional cancer treatments. Thirdly, chemopreventive agents can be taken orally, which makes them easier to administer and more accessible to patients. Despite the potential benefits of natural products as chemopreventive agents, there are also challenges to their development. One major hurdle is the lack of standardized dosages and formulations. Ma. Why natural products are sold as dietary supplements, which means they are not regulated by the Food and Drug Administration, and may contain varying amounts of active compounds. Moreover, natural produce. Why natural products are sold as dietary supplements, which means they are not regulated by the Food and Drug Administration, and may contain varying amounts of active compounds. Moreover, natural produce. TS can have varying effects depending on the form they are consumed in. For example, green tea consumed as a beverage may have different effects compared to green tea consumed as a supplement. Chem refers to treatments that are not typically used in conventional medicine, such as acupuncture, herbal medicine, and meditation. For example, acupuncture has been shown to reduce chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting, while meditation and mindfulness practices can help reduce anxiety and depression in cancer patients. Herba Medicine, which involves the use of natural products, can also be used in conjunction with cancer treatment to manage side effects such as fatigue and pain. By integrating CAM into conventional CANC. Medicine, which involves the use of natural products, can also be used in conjunction with cancer treatment to manage side effects such as fatigue and pain. By integrating CAM into conventional CANC. Our treatment, Healthcare providers can offer a more holistic approach that addresses the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of cancer patients. Introduction to Corrosion-Resistant Coatings for Aerospace Applications Introduction to Corrosion-Resistant Coatings for Aerospace Applications Corrosion is a pervasive phenomenon that causes materials to deteriorate over time due to chemical reactions with their environment. In the aerospace industry, corrosion is one of the most critical F. Ters affecting the lifespan, reliability, and safety of aircraft components, structures, and systems. As such, corrosion-resistant coatings play a critical role in protecting these assets from the H. Ters affecting the lifespan, reliability, and safety of aircraft components, structures, and systems. As such, corrosion-resistant coatings play a critical role in protecting these assets from the H. RSH and demanding conditions encountered during flight and ground operations. This article provides an overview of the various types of corrosion-resistant coatings used in aerospace applications, TH. Types of corrosion-resistant coatings The most common types of corrosion-resistant coatings used in aerospace applications are 1. Chromate-based conversion coatings Chromate-based conversion coatings are widely used as a surface preparation treatment to enhance the adhesion and durability of primer and top coat systems. Te. Coatings provide excellent corrosion resistance and are particularly effective against galvanic and pitting corrosion. However, they are also known for their toxic and carcinogenic properties, which Coatings provide excellent corrosion resistance and are particularly effective against galvanic and pitting corrosion. 
However, they are also known for their toxic and carcinogenic properties, which have led to their decreased use in recent years. Alternative non-chromate conversion coatings have been developed, but they do not provide the same level of performance. 2. Anodizing Anodizing is an electrochemical process that converts the surface of aluminum and its alloys into a durable and corrosion-resistant oxide layer. Anodized coatings can be dyed or painted, providing additional aesthetic and customizing options. Providing additional aesthetic and customizing options. 3. Zinc-based coatings Zinc-based coatings are widely used in the aerospace industry due to their excellent corrosion resistance, even in harsh environments. Two main types of zinc-based coatings are Used, zinc-rich primers and zinc-nickel alloy coatings. Zinc-rich primers use a high concentration of zinc particles in a binder material to provide cathodic protection and barrier properties. Zinc Used Zinc-rich primers and zinc-nickel alloy coatings. Zinc-rich primers use a high concentration of zinc particles in a binder material to provide cathodic protection and barrier properties. Zinc. Ickle alloy coatings also provide cathodic protection, but with the added benefit of improved wear and abrasion resistance compared to zinc-rich primers. 4. Epoxy-based coatings. Epoxy-based coatings are one of the most widely used coatings in the aerospace industry due to their excellent adhesion, toughness, and chemical resistance. Epoxy coatings CA Be formulated with various additives to provide specific performance properties, such as corrosion resistance. Epoxy coatings are effective against a wide range of corrosion types, including chemica. Be formulated with various additives to provide specific performance properties, such as corrosion resistance. Epoxy coatings are effective against a wide range of corrosion types, including chemica. Salt spray and humidity, but are not recommended for use in direct sunlight or UV exposure. 5. Polyurethane-based coatings Polyurethane-based coatings are a high-performance coating system that provides excellent resistance to abrasion, weathering, and chemical attack. Polyurethane coating are highly durable and flexible, making them suitable for use in complex geometries and harsh environments. Polyurethane coatings can be formulated to provide specific performance properties such as are highly durable and flexible, making them suitable for use in complex geometries and harsh environments. Polyurethane coatings can be formulated to provide specific performance properties such as corrosion resistance, but are generally not as effective as epoxy coatings in this regard. Properties and benefits of corrosion-resistant coatings Corrosion-resistant coatings provide several critical properties and benefits in aerospace applications, including 2. Adhesion – The ability of coatings to adhere strongly to the substrate is critical to their effectiveness. Good adhesion prevents cracking, delamination, and detachment, preserving the protective P. Operties of the coatings Operties of the coatings 4. Aesthetics Aerospace applications require coatings that are not only functional but also visually pleasing. Aesthetically appealing coatings can help prolong the lifespan of the aircraft by reduct. In the likelihood of damage caused by neglect or poor maintenance. In the likelihood of damage caused by neglect or poor maintenance. Limitations and considerations of corrosion resistant coatings. While corrosion-resistant coatings provide several benefits, there are also some limitations and considerations to keep in mind when selecting and using these coatings. 1. Environmental regulations Many corrosion-resistant coatings, such as chromate-based conversion coatings, 
are subject to environmental regulations due to their toxic and carcinogenic properties. A. Rospace companies must comply with these regulations to ensure their operations are sustainable and responsible. Rospace companies must comply with these regulations to ensure their operations are sustainable and responsible. 2. Compatibility Corrosion resistant coatings must be compatible with the substrate, as well as the primer and top coat systems. Incompatibility can result in adhesion failure, delamination, or innate. U8 protection, leading to premature corrosion. U8 protection, leading to premature corrosion. 3. Maintenance, although coatings can provide extended protection, proper maintenance is critical to their effectiveness. Neglecting regular inspections, cleaning, and repair can result in reduced co. Ting effectiveness and increased corrosion. Ting effectiveness and increased corrosion. 4. Cost. While corrosion resistant coatings can provide cost savings over time, they also require an initial investment, which must be weighed against other priorities and investments. 5. Maintenance. Proper maintenance is crucial to ensure the longevity and effectiveness of corrosion-resistant coatings. Regular inspections, cleaning, and repair must occur to avoid reduced coating. Effectiveness and increased corrosion. Effectiveness and increased corrosion. 6. Application techniques. The effectiveness of corrosion-resistant coatings is highly dependent on their application techniques. Proper surface preparation, coating volume, curing, and drying times. Re-essential in achieving the best results. Re-essential in achieving the best results. 7. Thickness. The thickness of corrosion-resistant coatings is crucial in achieving optimal protection. Too thin of a coating can lead to inadequate protection, while too thick of a coating can resolve. In cracking, delamination, and increased costs. In cracking, delamination, and increased costs. 8. Temperature restrictions. Certain coatings may have temperature restrictions regarding their application and performance. Temperature restrictions should be considered when selecting and applying. Erosion resistant coatings. Erosion resistant coatings. In recent years, there has been a focus on developing environmentally friendly and non toxic corrosion resistant coatings to substitute chromate based conversion coatings. Some of these alternatives Drug design. Creating molecules to interact with target proteins. Drug design, creating molecules to interact with target proteins. The development of new drugs is one of the most important and challenging tasks of modern medicine. In recent years, drug design has become an increasingly important area of research, as scientists s. act to develop new drugs that are more effective and safer than existing treatments. Act to develop new drugs that are more effective and safer than existing treatments. The first step in drug design is to identify a suitable target protein. This may be a protein that is found in diseased cells or tissues, or it may be a protein that is essential for the survival or function of the organism being treated. Once a target protein has been identified, the next step is to design a molecule that can interact with that protein in a specific way. Unction of the organism being treated. Once a target protein has been identified, the next step is to design a molecule that can interact with that protein in a specific way. The process of designing a molecule to interact with a target protein is complex and requires a deep understanding of the structure and function of both the protein and the molecule. One of the most 
Important considerations in the design of a drug molecule is its ability to bind to the target protein with high specificity and affinity. This means that the molecule must be able to recognize an N. Important considerations in the design of a drug molecule is its ability to bind to the target protein with high specificity and affinity. This means that the molecule must be able to recognize an N. Interact with the target protein in a way that is both highly selective and highly potent. There are a number of different approaches that can be used to design drug molecules. These include both computational and experimental methods, as well as a combination of the two. These methods are often used in combination with computational modeling to refine the design of drug molecules and to optimize their properties. Once a drug molecule has been designed, the next step is to test its efficacy and safety. This involves a series of preclinical and clinical trials in which the molecule is tested in vitro in a lab. Retori setting and in vivo in animal models and human subjects. The goal of these trials is to determine the efficacy of the molecule in treating the disease or condition it is intended to treat. Retori setting and in vivo in animal models and human subjects. The goal of these trials is to determine the efficacy of the molecule in treating the disease or condition it is intended to treat. As well as its potential side effects and toxicity. One of the major challenges in drug design is the need to balance efficacy and safety. In order to be effective, a drug molecule must be able to interact with its target protein in a highly specific and depotent way. However, this same potency can also make the molecule toxic or produce unwanted side effects. For this reason, drug designers must carefully balance the efficacy of the molecule with I. N D potent way. However, this same potency can also make the molecule toxic or produce unwanted side effects. For this reason, drug designers must carefully balance the efficacy of the molecule with I. S safety profile in order to develop drugs that are both effective and safe. Another challenge in drug design is the need to develop drugs that can overcome drug resistance. Many diseases, such as cancer and HIV AIDS, are able to develop resistance to drugs over time, making existing treatments less effective. Existing treatments less effective. In recent years, advances in technology and computational methods have revolutionized the field of drug design. New techniques such as virtual screening and machine learning have enabled drug design. As to rapidly screen large numbers of molecules and predict their likely efficacy and safety profiles. As to rapidly screen large numbers of molecules and predict their likely efficacy and safety profiles. Despite these advances, drug design remains a complex and challenging field. The development of new drugs is a lengthy and expensive process, and many promising drug candidates fail in clinical trial. Due to safety or efficacy concerns Due to safety or efficacy concerns To further expand on the topic of drug design, it is important to highlight some of the specific strategies used to develop drugs for specific diseases and conditions. For example, in the field of on. Ology, drug designers often target specific mutations or signaling pathways that are involved in cancer growth and proliferation. In this way, they are able to develop drugs that can specifically tar. Ology, Drug designers often target specific mutations or signaling pathways that are involved in cancer growth and proliferation. In this way, they are able to develop drugs that can specifically tar at cancer cells while leaving healthy cells unharmed. Similarly, in the field of infectious disease, drug designers develop drugs that target specific proteins or enzymes that are essential for the survival and replication of the pathogen. For example, Four drugs target the viral enzymes necessary for virus replication, while antibiotics target essential bacterial enzymes or cell structures. Four drugs target the viral enzymes necessary for virus replication, while antibiotics target essential bacterial enzymes or cell structures. 
Another approach to drug design is to develop drugs that can modulate the activity of the immune system. Many diseases, including autoimmune diseases and some types of cancer, are caused by an overact. IV or dysfunctional immune system. By developing drugs that can selectively modulate immune activity, drug designers can help to restore normal function and alleviate symptoms. IV or dysfunctional immune system. By developing drugs that can selectively modulate immune activity, drug designers can help to restore normal function and alleviate symptoms. It is also worth noting that drug design is not limited to small molecule drugs, but also encompasses the development of biologics. Biologics are drugs that are derived from living organisms, such as monoclonal antibodies and recombinant proteins. These drugs target specific proteins or receptors in the body and can be highly effective for treating a range of diseases, including cancer and autoimmune. Monoclonal antibodies and recombinant proteins. These drugs target specific proteins or receptors in the body and can be highly effective for treating a range of diseases, including cancer and autoimmune. Boon disorders. Finally, it is important to consider the ethical implications of drug design. While the development of new drugs can be highly beneficial for patients, there are also concerns about the safety and F. Icacy of these drugs, as well as their cost and accessibility. Icacy of these drugs, as well as their cost and accessibility. In summary, Drug design is a complex and multidisciplinary field that plays a critical role in the development of new treatments for a range of diseases and conditions. In addition to the challenges and complexities of drug design, there are also other factors that can influence the development and availability of new drugs. One important factor is the regulatory PR. Cess for drug approval and marketing. In most countries, Drugs must undergo a rigorous process of testing and approval by regulatory agencies before they can be sold to patients. Cess for drug approval and marketing. In most countries, drugs must undergo a rigorous process of testing and approval by regulatory agencies before they can be sold to patients. The regulatory process for drug approval can take many years and requires extensive testing in preclinical and clinical trials. This process is designed to ensure that drugs are both safe and effective. E for the populations they are intended to treat. While the regulatory process is necessary to protect patients from unsafe or ineffective drugs, it can also create significant barriers to drug devil. E for the populations they are intended to treat. While the regulatory process is necessary to protect patients from unsafe or ineffective drugs, it can also create significant barriers to drug devil. Mint and excess. Another challenge to drug design is the high cost of drug development, which can run into the billions of dollars. The high cost of drug development reflects the extensive testing required for Regula. ORI approval, as well as the costs of research and development, manufacture, and marketing. These costs are often passed on to patients, leading to high drug prices and limited access for some potion. ORI approval, as well as the costs of research and development, manufacture, and marketing. These costs are often passed on to patients, leading to high drug prices and limited access for some potion. Populations Using chemical sensors for disease diagnosis. Using chemical sensors for disease diagnosis. In the medical field, diagnosis is the first and most important step towards proper treatment of a disease. Traditionally, doctors relied on patient symptoms and medical history to make a diagnosis. But with advancements in technology, new tools are being developed to assist with diagnosis. One such tool is the chemical sensor, which is being increasingly used to detect and diagnose diseases. In Out with advancements in technology, new tools are being developed to assist with diagnosis. One such tool is the chemical sensor, which is being increasingly used to detect and diagnose diseases. 
In his article, we will explore the potential of chemical sensors for disease diagnosis. What are chemical sensors? Chemical sensors are devices that are capable of detecting and measuring the presence of various chemicals in a given environment. These sensors are designed to work with different types of chemicals, including gases, liquids, and solids. When specific chemicals are present, the sensor is triggered to produce a measurable signal, such as an electrical current or a change in color, including gases, liquids, and solids. When specific chemicals are present, the sensor is triggered to produce a measurable signal, such as an electrical current or a change in color. How do chemical sensors work for disease diagnosis? One of the most exciting areas of application for chemical sensors is in the field of disease diagnosis. With the use of these sensors, doctors can detect the presence of biomarkers, chemicals that re-present in the body, that are often indicative of certain diseases. Re-present in the body, that are often indicative of certain diseases. For instance, the presence of certain chemicals in the breath can be used to diagnose lung and liver diseases. The device was found to be over 90% accurate in diagnosing liver disease, which is a significant improvement over traditional diagnosis methods. Chemical sensors can also be used to detect biomarkers in urine, blood, and other bodily fluids. For instance, the presence of glucose in the blood can be indicative of diabetes and the level of SIR. AIM proteins in the urine can be used to diagnose kidney disease. By detecting these biomarkers, medical professionals can quickly and accurately diagnose diseases, which can lead to earlier treatment. AIM proteins in the urine can be used to diagnose kidney disease. By detecting these biomarkers, medical professionals can quickly and accurately diagnose diseases, which can lead to earlier treatment. And improve patient outcomes? Types of chemical sensors used in disease diagnosis There are several types of chemical sensors that are being used for disease diagnosis, including electrochemical sensors, optical sensors, and piezoelectric sensors. Electrochemical sensors Electrochemical sensors are designed to detect and measure the electrical properties of a chemical compound. These sensors are typically composed of a working electrode, a reference electrode, and a outer electrode. Outer electrode. One of the most commonly used electrochemical sensors for disease diagnosis is the glucose sensor used in diabetes management. This type of sensor measures the glucose levels in the blood by detectin. The electrical current produced by the reaction between glucose and an enzyme, such as glucose oxidase. The electrical current produced by the reaction between glucose and an enzyme, such as glucose oxidase. Optical sensors Optical sensors work by using light to detect and measure the presence of a chemical compound. One of the most common optical sensors used in disease diagnosis is the fluorescence sensor. This type of sensor uses the emission of light by a target molecule to detect its presence in a sample. FL Arescent sensors are often used to detect biomarkers in blood, urine, and other bodily fluids. Arescent sensors are often used to detect biomarkers in blood, urine, and other bodily fluids. Piezoelectric sensors Piezoelectric sensors are designed to detect and measure the mechanical properties of a chemical compound. These sensors are typically composed of a quartz crystal oscillator, which generates an elect. Recall signal in response to a mechanical force When a target chemical species binds to the surface of the quartz crystal, it causes a change in the crystal's mechanical properties, which in turn gen. Recall signal in response to a mechanical force. When a target chemical species binds to the surface of the quartz crystal, it causes a change in the crystal's mechanical properties, which in turn gen. 
rates a measurable electrical signal. Piezoelectric sensors are often used to detect biomolecules, such as proteins, in bodily fluids. They are particularly useful in the diagnosis of infectious diseases, where the presence of specific P. Oteins or enzymes can indicate the presence of a pathogen. Oteins or enzymes can indicate the presence of a pathogen. Benefits of chemical sensors for disease diagnosis The use of chemical sensors for disease diagnosis comes with several benefits. Firstly, these sensors are highly sensitive, which means they can detect even small concentrations of biomarkers. This M. Test them highly accurate, leading to more reliable diagnosis and treatment outcomes. Test them highly accurate, leading to more reliable diagnosis and treatment outcomes. Secondly, chemical sensors are relatively fast, enabling doctors and medical professionals to diagnose diseases quickly and efficiently. This can lead to earlier diagnosis and treatment and could salve. Lives in cases where time is crucial. Lives in cases where time is crucial. Finally, chemical sensors are non-invasive, which means they do not require any physical interaction with the patient. This can lead to a less uncomfortable experience for the patient, which is an M. Orton consideration in medical care. Orton consideration in medical care. Challenges with chemical sensors for disease diagnosis Despite their benefits, the use of chemical sensors for disease diagnosis is not without its challenges. One of the primary challenges is the cost of the sensors, which can be prohibitively expensive. For many healthcare institutions. Additionally, the sensors require specialized equipment and trained personnel to operate, which can further increase the cost of implementation. For many healthcare institutions. Additionally, the sensors require specialized equipment and trained personnel to operate, which can further increase the cost of implementation. Another challenge is the need for accurate calibration of the sensors to ensure their reliability and accuracy. This can be a time consuming and labor intensive process, which can be difficult to my time in busy healthcare settings. Time in busy healthcare settings. Furthermore, the specificity and sensitivity of chemical sensors can be affected by various factors, such as temperature, pressure, and humidity. These factors must be carefully controlled to ensure. Target identification, finding the right proteins to target for drug development. Target identification, finding the right proteins to target for drug development. Drug development is a complex and time-consuming process that requires extensive research and testing before a new drug can be approved for use in humans. One of the most critical steps in drug devil. Component is the identification of the target proteins that a drug will interact with to produce its desired therapeutic effect. Component is the identification of the target proteins that a drug will interact with to produce its desired therapeutic effect. Target identification refers to the process of identifying specific proteins that are involved in a disease or condition, and which can be targeted by drugs to treat the condition. Why is target identification important? The identification of the right target protein is essential for drug development, as it determines the effectiveness and safety of the drug. If the drug targets the wrong protein, it may not provide he desired therapeutic effect or may cause harmful side effects. He desired therapeutic effect or may cause harmful side effects. On the other hand, if the drug targets the right protein, it can lead to the development of effective and safe drugs that can treat or even cure diseases that were previously untreatable. For example, recent advances in cancer treatment have been made possible because of the identification of specific proteins that are overexpressed in cancer cells. Drugs that target these proteins, S. 
CHSR2 for breast cancer and BCR-ABL1 for chronic myelogenous leukemia, have shown remarkable efficacy and have become standard treatments for these diseases. CHSR2 for breast cancer and BCR-ABL1 for chronic myelogenous leukemia, have shown remarkable efficacy and have become standard treatments for these diseases. The identification of the right target protein is also important in reducing the cost and time required for drug development. Methods for target identification Several methods are used for target identification, including genetics-based methods, proteomics-based methods, and bioinformatics-based methods. Genetics-based methods involve studying the genetic mutations that are associated with a disease or condition. By analyzing the genes that are overexpressed or mutated in a disease, researchers can I identify the proteins that are involved in the disease and can be targeted by drugs. Identify the proteins that are involved in the disease and can be targeted by drugs. Another genetics-based method is knockout gene technology, which involves removing a specific gene from an organism to observe the effects on the organism's phenotype. Proteomics-based methods involve the study of the entire set of proteins present in a cell or tissue. By comparing the proteome of healthy and diseased cells, researchers can identify the protein's Th. T are overexpressed or underexpressed in the disease state. These proteins can be potential targets for drugs. T are overexpressed or underexpressed in the disease state. These proteins can be potential targets for drugs. Bioinformatics-based methods involve the use of computer algorithms and databases to analyze large amounts of data. By analyzing genomic and proteomic data, researchers can identify the proteins that are involved in a disease and can be targeted by drugs. Are involved in a disease and can be targeted by drugs. Challenges in target identification Despite the many methods available for target identification, there are several challenges that must be overcome to identify the right proteins to target. One challenge is the complexity of diseases. Many diseases are caused by a combination of genetic and environmental factors, making it difficult to identify the specific proteins that are involved in. The disease The disease Another challenge is the development of drugs that are effective and safe. Targeting specific proteins can be difficult, as many proteins have multiple functions in the body. An effective drug must T. Read only the specific function of the target protein, while avoiding other important functions. Read only the specific function of the target protein, while avoiding other important functions. Finally, the identification of the right target protein is only the first step in drug development. Once a target protein has been identified, drug developers must design compounds that can interact with the target protein in a specific and effective manner. This is a complex task that requires extensive research and testing. If the target protein in a specific and effective manner. This is a complex task that requires extensive research and testing. In addition to the challenges mentioned, one of the biggest challenges in target identification is identifying a protein that is specific to the target tissue or organ. An ideal drug would only inter CT with the target protein in a specific tissue or organ, while leaving other tissues and organs unaffected. This is known as selectivity. CT with the target protein in a specific tissue or organ, while leaving other tissues and organs unaffected. This is known as selectivity. Lack of selectivity can lead to harmful side effects, as the drug may interact with proteins in other tissues or organs, leading to toxicity. For example, a drug that targets a protein in the liver M. Y also interact with a similar protein in the heart, leading to heart toxicity. Y also interact with a similar protein in the heart, leading to heart toxicity. 
To address this challenge, drug developers often use a variety of techniques to increase the selectivity of their drugs. One approach is to design drugs that are only activated in the target tissue O. Organ. For example, a drug that targets a protein in the liver may be designed to only be activated in the liver. Organ. For example, a drug that targets a protein in the liver may be designed to only be activated in the liver. Another approach is to design drugs that only interact with the target protein in a specific conformation. Proteins can exist in different conformational states, and drugs that only interact with the target protein in a specific conformation can increase selectivity. Target protein in a specific conformation can increase selectivity. In addition, advances in computational methods have made it possible to design drugs that are highly selective and potent. Computational methods can predict how a drug will interact with a target pro. Ein, allowing drug developers to design drugs that only interact with the target protein in a specific way. Ein, allowing drug developers to design drugs that only interact with the target protein in a specific way. In addition to the challenges mentioned, there are also challenges related to the availability of relevant data. The identification of target proteins relies heavily on data from experiments and CLIN. Cal studies. However, obtaining this data can be difficult and time-consuming, particularly for rare diseases where patient populations are small. Cal studies. However, obtaining this data can be difficult and time-consuming, particularly for rare diseases where patient populations are small. Furthermore, data from different sources can be inconsistent or incomplete, making it challenging to integrate and analyze the data to identify target proteins. Another challenge in target identification is the potential for off-target effects. When drugs interact with proteins, they may also interact with other proteins that have a similar structure, let in. To unintended side effects. To reduce the risk of off-target effects, drug developers must carefully design drugs that interact with a target protein in a specific manner. To unintended side effects. To reduce the risk of off-target effects, drug developers must carefully design drugs that interact with a target protein in a specific manner. Green Hydrogen, the Chemistry of Energy Revolution Green Hydrogen, the Chemistry of Energy Revolution With climate change becoming an ever-present reality, countries are increasingly looking for ways to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. One way to achieve this is by transitioning from fossil fuel as to renewable sources of energy. While solar and wind power have garnered a lot of attention, their backslash is another alternative that backslash is gaining traction, green hydrogen. As to renewable sources of energy. While solar and wind power have garnered a lot of attention, their backslash is another alternative that backslash is gaining traction, green hydrogen. Green hydrogen refers to hydrogen gas that backslash is produced via electrolysis, using renewable energy sources such as solar or wind power. The process involves passing an electric current through weight, breaking it down into its constituent parts, hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen is then captured and stored, ready to be used as a fuel source for a variety of applications. Breaking it down into its constituent parts, hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen is then captured and stored, ready to be used as a fuel source for a variety of applications. So, why is green hydrogen considered such a game-changer in the world of energy? For starters, it has the potential to replace fossil fuels in a variety of applications. For example, it can be used a a fuel for transportation, either in fuel cell vehicles or by adding it to natural gas pipelines. It can also be used as a source of heat for industrial processes or as a way to generate electricity. 
A fuel for transportation, either in fuel cell vehicles or by adding it to natural gas pipelines. It can also be used as a source of heat for industrial processes or as a way to generate electricity. Through fuel cells But perhaps the biggest advantage of green hydrogen is its versatility. Unlike some other renewable energy sources, which are limited in how and where they can be used, hydrogen can be utilized in a I'd variety of applications. It can be used to power everything from cars to ships to buildings, making it an incredibly powerful tool in the fight against climate change. I'd variety of applications. It can be used to power everything from cars to ships to buildings, making it an incredibly powerful tool in the fight against climate change. So, how does the chemistry of green hydrogen actually work? It all comes down to electrolysis, which is the process of using electricity to split water molecules apart. Water molecules are made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, H2O. When an electric current is passed through the water, it breaks the bond between the hydrogen and oxygen atoms, splitting the molecule into H2, hydrogen. Two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, H2O. When an electric current is passed through the water, it breaks the bond between the hydrogen and oxygen atoms, splitting the molecule into H2, hydrogen. As an O2, oxygen gas. The reaction looks something like this, 2H2O2 H2 plus O2. The hydrogen gas is then captured and stored, ready to be used as a fuel source. When the hydrogen is used for energy, it combines with oxygen again to form water vapor, which is then released into T. E atmosphere. This creates a closed loop where water is converted into hydrogen and oxygen using renewable energy, and then reconverted back into water vapor when the hydrogen is used for energy. E atmosphere. This creates a closed loop where water is converted into hydrogen and oxygen using renewable energy, and then reconverted back into water vapor when the hydrogen is used for energy. Of course, the process isn't backslashed quite that simple. There are a number of technical challenges that need to be overcome in order to make green hydrogen production economically viable. One of the by Just is the cost of electricity. Electrifying the world backslashes energy supply will be a massive undertaking, requiring large amounts of renewable energy to be generated and distributed. Just as the cost of electricity. Electrifying the world backslashes energy supply will be a massive undertaking, requiring large amounts of renewable energy to be generated and distributed. Another challenge is the efficiency of the electrolysis process itself. While the process is relatively straightforward, it backslashes not very efficient. Despite these challenges, However, there backslashes a lot of excitement around the potential for green hydrogen to become a major player in the world of energy. One of the reasons for this is that it backslash and hash. 39. As seen as a way to decarbonize some of the hardest to abate sectors of the economy. 39. As seen as a way to decarbonize some of the hardest to abate sectors of the economy. For example, the aviation industry is responsible for around 2% of global greenhouse gas emissions. While electric airplanes are a possibility in the future, they backslash are still a long way off. NTH Meantime, green hydrogen could be used to power planes, either as a fuel for combustion engines or as a feedstock for fuel cells. Meantime, green hydrogen could be used to power planes, either as a fuel for combustion engines or as a feedstock for fuel cells. Similarly, the shipping industry is responsible for around 3% of global emissions. While some ships are being retrofitted to run on liquefied natural gas, a cleaner burning fossil fuel, green hydrogen. 
offers an even cleaner alternative. Offers an even cleaner alternative. It backslash is also worth noting that green hydrogen isn't backslash the only hydrogen game in town. Their backslash is another type of hydrogen, called blue hydrogen, that backslash is produced using fossil fuels, boo. With carbon capture and storage technology. This allows the carbon emissions from the process to be captured and stored underground, making it a cleaner alternative to traditional fossil fuels. With carbon capture and storage technology. This allows the carbon emissions from the process to be captured and stored underground, making it a cleaner alternative to traditional fossil fuels. While blue hydrogen isn't backslashed as clean as green hydrogen, it backslash is still a vast improvement over traditional fossil fuels. It backslash is also generally cheaper to produce than green hydrogen, which means that it could be a useful transition fuel while the world works on scaling up its renewable energy infrastructure. Eons that it could be a useful transition fuel while the world works on scaling up its renewable energy infrastructure. With the potential benefits of green hydrogen becoming increasingly widely recognized, numerous countries and companies are investing heavily in its development. For example, in Europe, the European Neon Backslash's Green Deal includes a strategy to develop a hydrogen economy with a goal of producing up to 10 million tons of renewable hydrogen by 2030. Germany has also launched a national hydroge. Neon Backslash's Green Deal includes a strategy to develop a hydrogen economy, with a goal of producing up to 10 million tons of renewable hydrogen by 2030. Germany has also launched a national hydroge. Strategy which includes the construction of up to 5 GW of hydrogen electrolysis capacity by 2030. In addition to these initiatives, there are numerous green hydrogen projects currently underway around the world. These range from small-scale demonstration projects to large-scale commercial operati. NS. For example, a consortium of companies in the Netherlands is developing a 100 MW green hydrogen plant that will use wind power to produce hydrogen for industrial use. Meanwhile, in Australia, a P. NS. For example, a consortium of companies in the Netherlands is developing a 100 MW green hydrogen plant that will use wind power to produce hydrogen for industrial use. Meanwhile, in Australia, a P. Ajek is underway to build a 500 MW solar farm to power a green hydrogen production facility. Despite the enthusiasm and investment, however, there are some who remain skeptical about the potential for green hydrogen to become a major player in the energy industry. One of the most commonly see. Ed reasons is the cost. While the cost of renewable energy sources has dropped dramatically in recent years, it backslash is still more expensive than fossil fuels in many parts of the world. As a result, Ed reasons is the cost. While the cost of renewable energy sources has dropped dramatically in recent years, it backslash is still more expensive than fossil fuels in many parts of the world. As a result, Producing green hydrogen at scale will likely be more expensive than producing hydrogen from fossil fuels, at least in the short term. Another concern is the efficiency of the electrolysis process. While there are ongoing efforts to improve the efficiency of the process, it backslash is unlikely to ever be as efficient as other forms of energy conversion, such as burning fossil fuels. This means that producing green hydrogen will always require more energy than other forms of energy production, which could limit its potential scale by energy conversion, such as burning fossil fuels. This means that producing green hydrogen will always require more energy than other forms of energy production, which could limit its potential scale by a 
Despite these concerns, however, there backslashes no denying that green hydrogen has the potential to be a game-changer in the world of energy. With its versatility and potential to decarbonize a wide R. Nay of industries, it backslashes likely to play an increasingly important role in the coming years and decades. 